Quebec's Charbonneau Commission has heard explosive allegations about the extent to which organized crime infiltrated the province's largest union. A longtime organizer named Ken Pereira sounded the alarm about the mafia and a motorcycle gang gaining access to a multi-billion dollar pension fund. The CBC's Terence McKenna has dug into this story and found a corruption crusader. In October 2008, Ken Pereira feared for his life. A longtime union organizer, he had recently discovered evidence that his employer, the largest union in Quebec, had been infiltrated by the Mafia and the Hells Angels. He saw that large amounts of money were disappearing, and he had already received threats to keep his mouth shut. At times, he even kept a baseball bat in his car. He had many sleepless nights and often had the sense that he was being followed. One day when he was leaving a Montreal restaurant after lunch, a van suddenly blocked him in. Two men jumped out. Turned out they were policemen. They identified themselves. They brought me in the car. So we rode for about an hour. And they tell me my life was in danger. That I might have to relocate. I might be part of a witness protection plan. What was your gut reaction to this whole thing? Well, uh, what the hell did I get into? Ken Ferreira didn't go into witness protection. He kept on with his personal crusade against union corruption. Unions are widely supported in Quebec. The rate of unionization here is over 30% higher than the rest of the country. That faith has been shaken, though, by revelations this fall at the corruption inquiry. The penetration of the Mafia and the Hells Angels into the union movement has come as a shock and is even seen as a threat to the integrity of a union pension fund in which over a half million Quebec workers keep their life savings. Until Ken Pereira was sworn in at the Charbonneau Commission this fall, few had any idea of the criminality behind the scenes at the senior levels of Quebec's largest union, the FTQ. The story begins in 2005, when Ken Pereira was recruited into the union by Jocelyn Dupuis, the powerful head of the FTQ construction wing. It would be a fateful relationship. He approached me. He approached me by telling me, listen, Ken, if you're ever interested going up the ladder, the FTQ has a place for you. What was your impression of him when you first met him? Well, you're flattered at one point. He's still, you know, he's a man who controls 70,000 men. Uh, but uh, I knew exactly who he was, you know. He wasn't doing this because he liked me. He was doing this because he wanted more power. <laughs> The first sign of trouble for Ken Pereira came when he was invited to this strip club on the outskirts of Montreal to celebrate his new status as a director. He says that some of the union directors in the group quickly disappeared into private booths to receive personal attention from strippers, leaving him alone with Jocelyn Dupuis. He says, you know, you can drink whatever you want, but you don't have to drink beer, you know. You, if you want vodka, you want scotch, you want uh, whatever you want, so don't worry about it. He says, is it the money? I said, no, it's just, you know, because here nobody pays. So right there he put his, you know, his cards on the table. Nobody pays nothing here. And uh, if you want girls, you said, tell me which one you want, you know. It looked right away like he was trying to buy me off. Pereira was increasingly disturbed by the work habits of Jocelyn Dupuis and some of the other directors of the FTQ union. Every summer day seemed to be spent on the golf course. In winter, there was unlimited food and drink at private corporate boxes at the Bell Center. There were an astonishing number of lunches and dinners in fancy restaurants. There's men coming into my office, you know, crying that they can't pay their mortgage. And these guys are laughing right beside me because they're saying, oh, tonight we're going to see the hockey game, and then we got to go to the Cavalli after this. So this is in front of everybody. And my guys in my guy's in my office and asking me, Ken, I got one week left of unemployment insurance and I, I got to sell my house because I can't even go on welfare. Pereira says the breaking point came when he heard a rumor that on one weekend during the Montreal Grand Prix, Jocelyn Dupuis allegedly spent $30,000 in duty entertainment at Cavalli, a restaurant identified by police as a hangout for mobsters. Pereira decided to take matters into his own hands 
to find evidence of the misappropriation of funds he suspected at the FTQ. He decided to break into the FTQ accountant's office where expense accounts were kept. He researched lockpicking tools on the internet and ordered what he needed to do the job. He waited until most employees had left the FTQ headquarters and made his way into the locked office to find Jocelyn Dupuis' files. He feels justified about breaking the law. Technically, I stole. That's what everybody wants to say over the FTQ guys. Yeah, I did. But he was stealing for 11 years, the members. And there was no way the executive was going to do anything about it. Pereira says he hit the jackpot right away, a thick file stuffed with reams of receipts submitted by Jocelyn Dupuis. And you see right away that there is no, no big difference between this one and that one. Many appeared to be in Dupuis' own handwriting. Cavalli, an account of over $24,294, just for a month and a half. Didn't you? Yes, Steve. Pereira saw that many of the other FTQ directors were implicated in the suspected fraud, so he decided to take his evidence right to the top, to Jocelyn Dupuis' boss, Michel Arsenault. So I told him, Jocelyn a volé la banque, mais les autres ont chauffé le char. So Jocelyn stole the bank, but the executive were driving the getaway car. So they're all complices, you know. So I told him, and Michel, you, we got to do something. His priority right there was kind of clear. His, do not go to the media. Did he seem shocked? What was his reaction? Oh, yeah, he was completely shocked. He, I don't know if he was acting or not, but he was shocked. The FTQ president eventually asked Ken Pereira to continue his investigation by actually confronting some of the directors involved in the financial scam. FTQ Financial Secretary Eddie Brandoni, who had personally authorized many of the suspect expense accounts, reportedly offered Pereira his Mercedes to keep his mouth shut. Then he throws me the keys. He says, this is yours, man. Okay, whoa. So he tried to buy me off with his Mercedes. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Well, I threw him back, but I should have kept it, like I said, you know, I should have rammed it into the wall <laughs> and just give him back the keys, but I didn't. Pereira says that when the attempted bribe didn't work, Brandoni brought him to this Italian restaurant in Montreal, where he was told that if he did not back down and return Jocelyn Dupuis expense receipts, he would have to deal with the mafia. He tells me, Ken, you don't know who you're messing with. and We can keep the mob away from you. We can say that this was just a misunderstanding, there was a union fight between us, but you got to give us the receipts. Because if you don't give us the receipts, we won't be able to do anything about it. Pereira also received some anonymous and more explicit threats. There was a lot of calls that came over my house, my phone number, you know, my cellular. Uh, on va tuer mon cachon, uh, tuer mon estidra, things like that. In English? Uh, we're gonna kill you, you rat, bastard, you, you, you pig. Did you think of leaving here? How did you confront this? I never thought of leaving, ever, 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 ever. You know, this is my, I was born here, this is here, never. I ain't gonna run away. Pereira soon discovered that he had more than the mob to worry about. Dupuis had many close associates in the Hells Angels. The notorious Quebec biker Normand Casper we met, now facing 22 separate murder charges, was a frequent visitor to Jocelyn Dupuis' FTQ office. Not only that, several businesses owned by the Hells Angels were being funded by the FTQ Fonds de Solidarité Investment Fund. Bikers were said to be money laundering millions in drug profits through the Quebec construction industry. Jocelyn Dupuis even used bikers to pressure workers in union elections. On the voting day, they, they brought five or six bikers with them. To do what? Just to maybe intimidate other people. You know, Jocelyn needed that vote, needed that election. He promised a lot of people his accessibility to the, to the Solidarity Fund. He needed to put his man in place, and he did. And they're still there. 
For 30 years, the Fonds de Solidarité FTQ has put your money to work. The Solidarity Fund is an $8 billion pension fund for Quebec workers that makes about $500 million in new investments every year in Quebec companies. Your money at work. It became clear to Pereira that Jocelyn Dupuis and his criminal friends were after that pot of money. He told me that he had access to $500 million. He was talking about the fund. He was talking about telling me that, you know, stop with your petty stuff there. We have money. We have money. We have accessibility to everything. So, you know, just play your cards right and, you know, you'll be part of us. The most powerful and notorious of Jocelyn Dupuis' associates who wanted access to the Solidarity Fund is Reynald Desjardins. For many years, Desjardins was the right-hand man of the legendary Montreal godfather, Vito Rizzuto. Although he and Rizzuto were in and out of prison, they continued to exert control over a massive crime syndicate that made money from drug trafficking, loan sharking, and protection rackets. As Ken Pereira's confrontation with Jocelyn Dupuis approached a climax, Pereira was summoned to a personal meeting with Reynald Desjardins at the Hilton Hotel in Laval. It was an invitation he felt he could not refuse. And he told me, listen, I did 11 years in prison. I could have done a bit more. Shut the hell up. I did my time. This is how we do it. We shut up, we do our time. He says, Jocelyn Dupuis is a baby. He likes having fun. I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to send him to Europe. And he tells me, listen, you got to put a, aside your, your differences with him. You got to put them aside completely, okay? I'll do everything I can to assure you that you will be respected at, at your level. What does this tell you? It was surreal a bit, but really the moral of the story was that uh, the FTQ was controlled by a mobster. At the Corruption Commission hearings this fall, it was revealed that the police were discovering Jocelyn Dupuis' ties to organized crime at the same time as Ken Pereira. Police surveillance videos showed clandestine meetings between mob boss Reynel Desjardins and Dupuis in construction company parking lots, and even an embrace showing the familiarity of the two men. Ken Pereira didn't know who to trust after police warned him his life was in danger. For help, he turned to Union President Michel Arsenault. He showed Arsenault police business cards, including one that indicated the officer worked for the Sûreté du Québec drug squad. He told me, listen, Ken, arrogantly, put his two feet on the table. He says, Ken, if you're dealing in drugs, I really can't help you. These two cops were from... Uh, the narcotic division. So this is when uh, you know I went a bit ballistics on him, told him off. You realized you were being thrown overboard at that point? For sure. Michel Asano sold me out. Cette semaine, enquête lève le voile sur un scandale à la FTQ Construction. Ken Pereira decided that his best protection was to tell his story to the Radio Canada investigative program Enquête. Tout le monde le savait dans l'industrie de la construction. Jocelyn Spui had already resigned from the FTQ. Not long after, as he returned to Canada from a Florida vacation, he was arrested and charged with multiple counts of fraud. What do you think is going to happen to Jocelyn Dupuis? What do you want to have with him? Uh, he was exposed for what he is. So, you know, I don't care about him. I really don't care about him. Reynald Desjardins, the mob boss who used Dupuis to infiltrate the FTQ union, was also arrested and charged with murder. He allegedly took part in a plot to kill a competing mobster who was fished out of a river near Montreal after being shot police could not save the man's life. Following the Charbonneau Commission revelations this fall, FTQ boss Michel Arsenault announced that he would not stand for re-election as Quebec's most powerful union leader. It became clear that he was facing a palace revolt. Monsieur Pereira? At the end of his six days of testimony at the Quebec Corruption Commission, Judge Franz Charbonneau paid tribute to the bravery of Ken Pereira. Merci beaucoup. Vous avez fait preuve de beaucoup de courage. Merci. Merci. I'm not brave. I'm just. I just did what I had to do. That's what we should. And if if these guys, the union members of the FTQ, the union directors, that had done what I did, 
11 years ago, we wouldn't be in this mess today. Whistleblower Ken Pereira says he has been blackballed in Quebec. He now has to leave Montreal for two weeks out of every three for a job in Cold Lake, Alberta. He hopes that the Charbonneau Commission will result in a cleanup of the construction industry here, so that one day he will be able to work at home again. For the National, I'm Terence McKenna in Montreal. The Charbonneau Commission has been hearing stunning allegations of corruption for 19 months now. It's due to publish its interim findings by the end of January and its final report in April of 2015.